Hi everyone, I'm Rita Kakati Shah, your host for The Uma Show. Welcome to your one-stop journey for feeling empowered. We are a platform for change. We build confidence. We are your voice. We want you to be bold, be you, be Uma. Today, we're exploring empowerment journeys in fashion. And I'm so excited to be joined by our goddess of go-getting, Babi Aluwalia, who is the co-founder and creative director of the luxury fashion house, Sachin and Babi, as well as the co-founder of the Good Cloth Company in New York City. Welcome, Babi. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course, it's so lovely to see you again. Likewise. So you're likewise. from... Um, New Delhi originally, you grew to have a love for fashion. Um, tell us about your upbringing and how you got into the world of fashion in the first place. Um, you know, to, in a nutshell, I'm an army brat. My uh, mom was a kids wear designer in New Delhi when, we, when dad was posted to New Delhi when I was in grade four onwards. Mm -hmm. And she had a beautiful boutique and she came up from ground up and she had a beautiful uh, boutiques of beautiful frocks and, you know, so design and um, and style and uh, the curiosity of fabrics was always in our DNA. Um, mm. So kind of grew up with a sensibility of entrepreneurship, of creative spirit. And then, um, you know, went on to kind of study at the Lady Sri Ram College and then arrived at FIT uh, through, you know, applying at Sophia's in Bombay and then deciding, oh, maybe I should go to New York later because the family was like, all right, <laughs> older one finished. And then, so it was really... Um, you know, something that was always around us. Uh, yeah. It was it was a tactile material, so I could connect mm -hmm. to it. I liked beautiful, luxurious things as a kid. Uh, yeah. The texture and feel of something uh, glorious and fabulous. So it kind of you know it germinated from from a while from when I was little. You know, yeah. So, yeah. I love that. Yeah, and I love that. And you actually also mentioned that from there stemmed your love and passion for it. So you studied at the Fashion Institute of Technology, FIT, where yeah. you actually met Sachin. Um, tell us about your love story and how that so led to the beginning of the company. It's the <laughs> funniest story ever, really, because I arrived in the fall of 94 uh, to study mm -hmm. textile development and marketing. And yeah. Sachin arrived from Mumbai uh, to study fashion design. And, you know, as international kids, there were kids from Singapore, from Hong Kong, you know, you kind of bond together because you're learning the lays of the land and you're finding mm -hmm. out which is the safe part of the city to go to. Now, this, mind you, is New York City in the 90s. So we just became dear friends and we kind of kind of were cut for the similar fabric, I want to say. Yeah. I know it sounds kind of so, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, you can't, because his mom is a creative spirit as well. She had, a, yeah. at that point, had a very successful women's wear line in India. And his father was a, uh, an engineer at Philips. So again, uh, you know, similar a similar background, similar um, a point of view at home. So when we started talking, mm -hmm. our conversations were aligned. We were talking about pretty much the same thing about mm -hmm. how we want to kind of, you know, we were very lucky that we could have gotten back to India and probably build a family businesses and taken it further. And take, yeah. But because, you know, we were young kids and to me, mm -hmm. any young spirited entrepreneurial head wants to land in America because this is the land of the free where you could actually you know, learn so many different things where you aren't burdened with, you know, the way things were. So we just became dearest friends, lovers, started off this lovely idea of, okay, right after school, we'll do this, that, the other. So it was really very natural, you know, um, and it really started from there. I love it because it's always in that things that flow naturally that you don't plan that kind of ends up happening. And just, you know, life turns out that way, I guess, you know, um, so I love that. So and together, you know, what you're planning, you know, you've got to kind of go with your gut in a way, you know. Absolutely, yeah. yeah no, that's that's the beauty of it. Absolutely. So together, you actually design and built an embroidery business together, uh, working for top houses, um, including Oscar de la Renta, Carolina Herrera, Jean Paul Gaultier, and Manola Blahnik. That must have been amazing. Um, in a way, you were one of fashion's best kept secrets behind the scenes until you set up on your own. Tell us about that journey. You know, it was very interesting because at that point, um, we wanted to be a design service business where we could mm -hmm. collaborate with the finest of the finest, who we thought were the finest of the finest, and right, right. kind of enhance their strengths with what our capabilities of India could do. At that point, we had inherited setups and, you know, amazing right. workforces, but they, their appetites and skill sets were really focused, focused towards the Asian market. So we had learned right. a lot because we are kind of quick learners as to what 
at least at we were 23 years old. What did we mm. know? In a way we knew a lot. You know? Why can't we work in a perfect world, go up to these design firms, be the purveyors of all things refined and en- enhance their strengths and build their businesses and then therefore build a healthy design service business where we can actually make good money, give back and, um, you know, kind of do what we do right and keep honing the skills of our craftsmen in India. So mm-hmm. it was just a simple idea. There wasn't a plan of, you know, th- it was, this is what I want to do. This is, we've got a year, a year and a half. We had a small family loan, which we, you know, mm-hmm. we were using wisely. And we started from scratch, like everybody does, you know. Yeah. No, I love that because you actually took your own skill set and your love for something, but what can we do with what we already have? And it just grew naturally. I yeah. love that. Um, yeah. And, and and to your point, you know, you actually own a small family run factory in South Mumbai, um, where you use imported fabrics from Italy, from Spain, plus the intricate local um, craftsmen. So tell us more about that. And also why you think that having a factory has been important in your design process. Yeah, the thing is that we were very lucky that that is kind of, you know, makes us very unique because we own Mm -hmm. the supply chain. So listen, that pandemic has hit and it's not a robust form, but I mean, there's, you know, it's 280 strong in, in Mumbai and they are now, most of these skilled uh, uh, artisans are second generation and most of them mm-hmm. have actually been with us 40, because wow. we've been in the business 23 years and Geeta, my mom-in-law has been, been in the business 10, 15 years, uh, 20 years in her game. So uh, yeah, Riyaz master, some of these chaps have been with us for, I want to say over 38, 42 years. So uh, the thing is, um, where was my thought going? We we think it is important to kind of ha- to kind of nurture your own supply chain to build partners who understand the the kind of quality and the work the work that you want to present we were very mm-hmm. fortunate that we were trained by the finest because of course we have they we had it over the course of time developed our rapport with the americans and the american designers but but when we started working from the europeans they were mm-hmm. really open minded about actually sending their technicians, flying their people down and training our hands with Zuki machines, with the best finest needles, with teaching us about azo-free dyes, about better quality uh, materials. So we learned from the finest of finest in terms of how to, you know, hone your skills and do better. So I think Mm -hmm. what better if you can strengthen your bases, uh, own your own supply chain. Um, it's not easy, trust me, because mm-hmm. it's, uh, you know, you've got to kind of keep it balanced between New York office and there. But I think it's a huge asset. It's taken a lot of toil to do that. It's taken 23 years and then some for, for my career. Yeah. So um, I think it's, it's, um, it's the big, you know, a big piece of, where, of our success. I love it. And thank you for sharing that, because to your point, it's not just a matter of just setting something up. It's a lot of blood, sweat and tears and constant. The sweat equity is right? <laughs> Absolutely. The sweat equity that goes into the toil. I mean, mm-hmm. you can't put a value on that at all. You Absolutely. Know? Yeah. And you don't often get to see that from the outside world. You just get to see the finished product. You don't know I about know. behind the scenes. You see, in this world of fashion, it is so glamorous in terms of what we put out mm-hmm. and how we portray it, because in the end, um, you know, it is an aspirational point of view Absolutely. and people want, but this is a very serious business, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. in terms of the layers of it and how you're doing business and who your partners are and how you yeah. want to scale it. So, yeah. Absolutely. And it takes a lot of trust as well, I guess, and that builds and the reputation builds over time. So then fast forward from that experience of yours, Satching and Babi, your luxury brand was born in 2009 which you co-founded with Sachin, um, and you've also served as the brand's creative director since its inception. Now, the luxury label is actually recognized for its elegant occasion dresses, its bridal and ready-to-wear collections, celebrity following that you have as well, and also design partnerships that you just mentioned with high-profile fashion houses in both the couture and ready-to-wear segments. I mean, that's amazing. Tell us more about that. So, you know, our journey was actually started off in the advanced contemporary world and mm-hmm. we evolved into all things occasion and now we're evolving into, you know, day to evening occasion, just as where we like to be today is very, very yeah. far away from where we started because the landscape of the market has changed. Right. But 
because I thought at that point was like as amazing as these legacy houses are, even as at a bit of a discount, I don't know if I can afford these goods. I don't know if it makes mm-hmm. sense to my lifestyle because I'd like to send my kids to private school. I'd like to, you know, so in a way I had to make sense of what, and if you have a palette for all things refined, you want to live in those goods. So right. we had the advantage of actually, um, you know, uh, serve, catering to the, the urban woman, uh, presenting mm-hmm. a beautiful, well-crafted, well-made point of view, which was more value-driven at a sensible price that I could buy it at. Because if it made right. sense to me, I knew 20 of other, other, my girlfriends would be like, you know, yeah, this I can enjoy. Maybe this I can, you know, go indulge and kind of make sense with. So, yeah, and that line is evolving now as much as we, as, as luxury and evening, you know, like look at the way people are living today. So evening has mm-hmm. taken a bit of a pause, which is fine. It'll come back. Um, so we're evolving into more and more all things occasion from day to evening that'll actually carry you from day to day because today's lifestyle has changed. No, absolutely. And you're flexible as well. And you're actually understanding who is it, who is your buyer, who's the consumer out there. Who and I love that. <laughs> yeah. And you designed it absolutely beautiful, you know. Um, oh, thank so- you. <laughs> So um, you mentioned, obviously, you know, your, 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 your kids and sending them to private school. You do actually have two daughters um, and you're quite involved in their lives. Um, would love to hear a little bit about how you balance your days. I mean, walk oh us through God. a typical day. In the, like, tell us about the, a day in the life of the luxury designer, Babby. <laughs> I mean, there isn't a, I mean, right now life is very topsy-turvy. So I can tell you the day in my life in a pandemic life (laughs) because the girls are still at home online learning. And uh, it's like a working we works. Like I have two, Mm -hmm. three floors. It's like a working we works at home where uh, older ones. So, you know, you get up in the morning, organize breakfast, get take the dog for a walk or Sachin will take the dog for a walk, organize breakfast, you know, for the kids get them up and uh, older one's fine she gets at the younger one she needs a little bit of a nudging because she's <laughs> with schools and you know it's it's not very interesting it's so dry to learn online you're not making mm-hmm. friends right. you're not you know talking to people and then um just a quick shower i i try to make time to do my tm which i must do i cannot do yeah. it twice a day it's too much of a luxury i wish i could because you know i like to do yoga once in a while i like to get a blowout once in a while i mean how many luxuries yeah. can i afford <laughs> as a working mom you know <laughs> so um and then uh, just get there organize break, break, breakfast organized inhale nice a quick yogurt for myself and then run off to the studio really I have part-time, a part-time housekeeper who comes out to take care of the dog, the house, this, that, the other. And before you know it, it's in the studio looking at next season, looking at selling of this season, doing the deep dive with my digital team as to what's moving, right. trying to listen to good music to keep my senses alive to what we should be working on next. Um, right. uh, you know, looking at the change of the landscape, um, you know, arguing a little and not so much and then getting along again with Sachin. And then usually I dash back uh, and it's dinner. I mean, I, you know, yeah. dinner, uh, prepping dinner, which is, I mean, I'm not a good Indian cook and I don't know how to organize myself there. But, you know, just a quick marinade in the oven and then there's dinner. Um, uh, and just asking the girls how their days were because you have to be very sensitive about these young minds. I mean, it's just so dry to just... Yeah. You know, so make sure the younger one's gone out for a run or on a good day. I'll be like, come on, take your bike and go 20 blocks, you know, bike out a little bit. And um, maybe a girlfriend will call her, I'll catch up. Um, maybe a dash of wine just to kind of take <laughs> the edge off at the end of the day. And yeah. um, it doesn't stop really, you know, just because mm-hmm. some the, my younger one's executive functioning skills aren't perfected. So making sure she's not super distracted. I'm like, come on, screen's off. Just let's, when you're doing work, just do the work, you know, kind of just yeah. nudging and softly making sure that's done. And, and I haven't really seen any fun episodes of late. So I just watched my <laughs> one or two favorites of The Crown again, like two nights ago. Right. That calms you a little. And yeah, and taking Coco out for a walk at night. I mean, it just flies. It just it flies. flies. It flies. Yeah, and yeah. I love that. And it's such a real, real life day that we all go through in so many different ways. You know, whether it's the homeschooling or balancing your work and your home life and just getting it all done. Um, so thank you for sharing that. You know, it just sounds like it's a very active day. And I think certainly for me, I, I have to have a schedule. You know, if I don't, yeah. then the whole day crumbles. And I, I would imagine for you as well, because you have your meetings with different locations around the world. 
it's so important to kind of stay on top of everything um, and be an involved mum as well. Um, and I, know, I know, it just yeah. doesn't stop. Yeah, true. Yeah. Well, you're totally empowering and very inspiring. And at UMA, we are about empowering women and inspiring the next generation, which is exactly what you do. So as an accomplished female entrepreneur, um, tell us about the incredible work that you are doing to support other entrepreneurial women. Um, I think, you know, I have the sensibility of I rise, you rise. You know, we have to kind of empower each other in terms of whether it's a motivational quick chat with a girlfriend who's kind of struggling or we all go through similar journeys of, you know, self-doubts, all of this. It's yeah. just you have to trust your gut. You have to feel that there is a way that you can find whatever your landscape is if your workforce, because most of my dear friends are not in the design field. They are either in finance or in real estate or in different kind of, you know. So it's um, it's really just being positive, being a listener, um, being having the rationale of actually, you know, if you know your friends well, or you, and, and the female brain, the way it is, I think, it is very highly emotional, very highly intelligent mind. But there, we get in our own way, you know, sometimes. So it's also kind of, you know, kicking the doubt on the side and saying, all right, this is going to come in time. But it's, you've got to keep the path of, you know, persevere and have the grit and have, keep learning yeah. through experiences and keep going. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I love that approach as well, because you're right, you know, in a way we have so much going on and so much to balance that it's important to structure and compartmentalize these different facets of our immense personality out there. So I love exactly what you shared and that is actually really inspiring. Um, you also have a new venture um, born out of the pandemic. Tell us about the Good Cloth Company. Oh my God, that was really, you know, when we sat still and it was, I think the month of uh, April, we had already, mm -hmm. it was already 30, 40 days, mid-April, it was already 30, 40 days of the pandemic. Yeah. And me and Sachin were, we were chatting, we were like, you know, this will pass. Mm -hmm. We don't know when, but it will pass. But eventually when things kind of are sane, how will we bring our workforce back? Whether it's in Mumbai, whether it is with our partners in Vietnam, whether it is here, we, we, yeah. we were 30 strong in New York City, no longer, but hey, it'll come back. Um, like what, like what do, this is, how do we kind of, you know, kind of figure out a way to make our, our people, ourselves even, more stronger? Because also we came to realize, you know, uh, Rita, that in this time, the wheels of the economy, who turned? In a way, it was mm -hmm. a simple chicken farmer. It was the delivery guy. It was the essential workers. It was yeah. people who, I mean, they said, these guys really, I mean, we were lucky with Amazon deliveries and listen, business fell off the nose and it fell off the, mm -hmm. you know, it kind of fell off the cliff. And, but we still were thankful that the fridge was stocked. We had a little bit of savings. Yeah. Yes, it's not fun going through such difficult times. I'm not romancing it at all. It's really right. horrid. Mm -hmm. You have to figure out for the next and the new what makes sense and how do we do that? So just luck by chance, we were introduced to a Swiss farm and we tied up a trade and licensee agreement and we kind of um, a trademark the name called uh, Good Cloth because it does have antimicrobial, antiviral properties. So basically it's a, sci it's a science plus a performance workwear point of view mm. where we yeah. um, can coat any fabric uh, with this compound which makes it antimicrobial and therefore it it is this is not a silver bullet but it has the properties of protecting the vector the actual fabric that can be used as a face mask as a set of gloves as um as a vest as um not an entire uniform if you don't want to redo uniforms but as as a a, a, a really chic um you know cloth covering. So it was basically going into the performance work wear space with safety, with sense of responsibility, because you don't want to make stuff and just trash in the bloody landfills. You want to make things that you can throw in the wash 20, 30, 32 times, and the properties are still 99, 96% proof. After the 30th wash, it just whittled down, it whittles down, it doesn't come down to zero. So yeah. We are still, I mean, listen, that is, we are in pre-revenue stage right now. We're still having very interesting conversations because it's more of an mm -hmm. institutional business. It's not really a B2B. 
right uh, uh, just because of the scale of the business and the way the the the, the items should be priced so yeah. it's very interesting because it's finding holes and being smart in terms to yeah. who should we talk to how we find the point of view and what makes sense for this game to kind of kick in and come alive so it's very interesting it's very new and it's kind of keep your brain cells kind of you know re- because it's not the same whole hum it's something new yeah. but yet it is mm-hmm. within the wheelhouse of you know a, a garment so mm-hmm. it's i mean i don't want to drum it up too much it, it it's going to go somewhere because it's it gets lots of people very interested and excited and, and uh, you know kind of interested in the in the conversation so having that and going you know and seeing this actually you know blossom into something real yeah well i think it's very exciting and it's much needed and it also shows how flexible you are and how you're just constantly thinking like an entrepreneur you know times are tough you don't give up you pivot, yeah. you do something different. You think, okay, what is the need? Where are the holes? Exactly like you said, and you've built something out of nothing in such a short amount of time. And when it's the hardest time that we've ever faced. So that's incredible. So oh, thank you so much for sharing you. that, <laughs> really. Um, before you. we let you go, um, what advice would you give to any young girls watching today, looking to make the most out of their futures? Well, honestly, I know people say follow your passion and then it will come. I think you have to have something. Talent is important. I don't, I don't disagree, but you've got to be willing to learn. You've got Mm. to be willing to keep your ears and eyes open. You've got to also always have that sense of like, I think I know what I'm talking about. Have that sense of confidence about this is what my point of view is, no matter what your workforce is, what what your landscape is. Um, so I think it's just being an open learner, uh, you know, having an intrinsic, trusting your yes. sense of gut as to what your point of view should be and just enjoying this crazy journey of your life because it's just, if you're engaged and you're positive and you're always, you know, agile, I think it'll come to you because you're a seeker as a human being anyway. And, mm-hmm. you know, for us, it's, you just have to keep your your mind alive in terms of right. be interested. Be if not, and it's dulling your thing, then find another way of making it interesting. You know, so um, it's. Um, I mean, sometimes I should follow my own advice, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's so That's easy to go it up. But it's easy. To, I know, it's, but it's hard to live it because uh, you know failure does kind of knock your 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 socks down, but. Just learn from it. It's uh, yeah. all these things. They're humbling. Failures are very humbling. Trust me, I've had many, and yeah. you know. But uh, the road to success is like very, very messy. You know, the traje- mm. the, the trajectory for most is not just yeah. a straight arrow. No, absolutely. That very, very well said. I love that. You know, just keep trying and. Failure is actually the roadmap to success. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing your incredible and powerful journey with us today, Babi. Babi Alualia, co-founder and creative director of Satching and Babi and co-founder of The Good Cloth Company in New York City. And thank you to our viewers for joining us on this empowerment journey today. We want you to embrace the inner goddess of go-getting. We want you to be bold, be you, be Uma.